Good afternoon traders. In this video, I'm going to show you how to screen for stocks to day trade in Webull 5.0. We're going to use a very strict criteria. It's only going to give you a handful of stocks, maybe one, and then there still may be reasons why you will not take a trade on them. So this is going to help increase the probability of you getting into winning trades and reduce your losing trades. So this is Webull 5.0. I am on the customized page. If you don't have the latest version of Webull, you can download it directly from their website. Um, this might also work in Webull 4.0. So you go to the customized page. You're going to have, we'll get to this in just a second. Be, I'm gonna start you out with a blank layout, which is what you're gonna see. So blank layout. Now we're going to add the, uh, let's go in order. We're gonna to go to the markets page. So this is in the add widgets section, markets. We're gonna look at top gainers. We're also going to look at the most active traded stocks and the quotes. So these are the three things that you need on the list. Now, once you've got that set up, you have to link them all together because you can see if I click on any of these stocks, the quotes don't change. So we can close this now Go up here to this little uh, single horizontal line set as group. We'll just pick group one. You can set it to whatever you want, but they all must be on the same group. That way, if you click in any of these boxes, you see that the quotes changed. If I click over here to SNDL, then the quotes change as well. Now let's put them in the order that we're going to use them. So first, let me just increase the size. So this works. This is a little bit tricky here uh, for whatever reason in uh, Webull 5.0. You can see there that at first it just scrolled. So you might have to click a couple of times, but basically you just want to bring it down to the end of the list. So this gives you the top 20 top gainers. And then next we're going to put the uh, quotes because we're going to use this to check the float size. Again, I'm going to grab the bottom and I'm going to bring it down here. We don't really need it that long, but um, I'm going to decrease it. You see what happens there? Like here, you can't really read that word. So I'm going to decrease the width of this box just so I can see uh, free float very clearly. And there's no confusion, confusion about what you're looking at. There's also a free float market cap, which we're not concerned with. I'll pull that open just so you can see that. So we're, we're going to be interested in this number here. Then we're going to use this active trade tab you can minimize all of these actually. I'm gonna show you um, the, the smallest size. That way if you're using uh, say a laptop or something like that, you can still see everything on one screen. So you don't need these boxes to be this big. About there is where I want it. And then I'm gonna go down a little bit to put the top 20 stocks here. So now we've got the top 20 top gainers, the top 20 top volume stocks, and then we have the, the quotes where we can check our float size. So that's three criteria. Let me show you really quickly the criteria for looking for trades. My screener criteria, they must be on the top gainers list. They must be a lower float size of 100 million shares or less. I put this max 110 million shares because what if you get a stock that's say 101 million shares, are you not gonna include that? No, that's roughly the same size. So I need like an absolute max because we're, you have to draw the line somewhere. So I'm looking for 100 million shares or less up to the absolute max of 110. Then if it's 111, I'm not gonna touch it. Like I said, you gotta draw the line somewhere. Now, the only exception is if a stock meets the top gainer, if it's the number one top gainer, if it's the number one by volume, then you can look at a float size of 500 million shares or less because there's gonna be so much volume in that stock that it should be able to move a considerable amount to make the uh, trade worth your while. So now, the uh, so those are the screener criteria. We have all that set up. So let's go look for an example. Uh, I know one right off the bat that was up here earlier. It's still here. It's getting down toward the bottom now. But MITO, I know it meets all of the three criteria. Most of these don't, and that's a good thing because you want to be very selective with your trades. So, for example, JZXN is the number one uh, top gainer right now with a percent change of 542%. But if you pull this up on the chart, you'll see it's not very tradable. It has next to no volume, 120,000 shares right in the middle of the trade day. That is a very dangerous stock to be trading. 
Um, you, you could likely jump in even if it's at a good price and you won't be able to sell it because there's not enough volume. You can see the price just moved, I think, like $3 there in one second. So that's um, that does not meet the criteria. In order for the stock to go on my watch list, it has to meet all three criteria. So MITO is one that I know meets it. It has a free float size of less than 100 million shares. And then is it on the top 20 volume? Yes, it is. So that goes on the list immediately. Um, and again, I'll have this open on my laptop so I won't be flipping back and forth. Now make sure that once you get this set up, you save it. So go up here to the blank layout, right click, rename the tab, name it whatever you want. Um, I named mine TA Screener, so I'm just going to name this one Screener. And then uh, save as customized layout. So since you changed the name, this will already have it there. Save. Now it's going to be saved. So if you close this or you lose it or whatever, um, like let's close it right now just to show you the example. And you want to get it back up, go to that plus sign for new layout, and it should be up here. There it is, screener and it'll pop up and there you go. So I recommend having this either open on another monitor or on your laptop and then when you find a stock or stocks that meet your criteria, you won't have to click through. You can have this page open up uh, and I show you how to set this up in another video. So let's go over to uh, my customized layout here. So this is basically based off of the stocks tab and then you have the chart widget open grid and then you can select from this drop down menu nine charts and then you can see i put mito on there but if it's not there you would just type it into the to one of these boxes click enter and there it is so mito uh is, at least i didn't go through that whole list but i know it meets the screener criteria but does it meet my criteria to look for a trade is it trading above the previous day and the pre-market high so that's something that i have to look for and you can see that if i go through the chart here um, this is the pre-market and aftermarket. So there's a high of 193 and then the previous day, obviously that's above it. So in the pre-market, it broke out above its previous high. So now that we're trading it today, we need to see it above that high. And it never, never got above that high. You can see that it's trading down below the high. So there's no real strength in this stock and there's no reason to look for a trade. The price action would have to rise up above this previous high and then I can look for my favorite pattern which is the ABCD pattern. If you don't know what that is I have a video explaining that. Maybe you have another um, pattern that you like to take the three bar play or whatever but it's always a good idea to make sure that the stock is trading above the previous high. That makes sure that it's at least in a recent uptrend and if you're going long on the stock which means you're buying it and you're looking for the price to go up that is a good um, criteria to look for to make sure that the stock is more likely to go up again it doesn't have to even if it meets all that screener criteria and it's trading above the previous day high it could still fail so that's why you should always use stop losses and always take your stop loss no matter what i use a profit target i always honor the profit target it's set to two times my risk and that means that two of my winners will cancel one loser. So I honor the profit target. And then in the long run, with this criteria, we should be green. All right, so let me know if you have any questions on this. Again, um, the, here's the customized page. That's where we did the screener. So we're looking for top gainers with the low float size, 100 million shares or less and in the top 20 volume if they meet those criteria they go on the list if they're trading above the previous sessions high previous day high then we can look for a trade and only then we can look for a trade so hopefully hopefully this video was helpful to you if not uh, let me know in the comment section below if i missed anything uh, if it was please hit the like button subscribe if you haven't already and uh, share it with your friends if you think they can benefit from it all right take care